One of the issues that faced Texas after the Civil War was conflict on the frontier. Before the start of the Civil War in 1861, most Native Americans had been removed from East Texas to the Indian Territory, which is present-day Oklahoma. On the West Texas frontier, though, Native American groups continued to fight against settler expansion into their land. When the Union Army left the left West Texas during the Civil War, that there was no one there to protect the settlers. West Texas was left unprotected, and groups specifically the Comanche and the Kiowa and others stepped up attacks on settlers. So as a result, the frontier line was pushed back east uh, as these Native American groups were able to regain some of their land during the Civil War since there was no United States Army there uh, to deal with it. After the war ended, though, the United States Army returned to the region of West Texas. Native American raids were difficult to stop, though, uh, because it was smaller groups that would come down from the Indian Territory attack and then uh, return to the Indian Territory. Uh, the forts were undermanned that were along the West Texas frontier, and they were spread far apart, and there was a shortage of supplies. Uh, one group who was prominent in the West Texas frontier are a group we refer to as the Buffalo Soldiers. These were African-American troops who were sent to man the most of the forts in West Texas uh, because to the U.S. Army they thought that West Texas was a... Uh, not nice place to live, a place that really they didn't want to send troops, and so they would send the African-American troops to that region. The U.S. government is going to seek a treaty with Native Americans in 1867. This is known as the Medicine Lodge Creek Treaty. They met at Medicine Lodge Creek, Kansas. Five different Native American groups and 5,000 people are going to come. Uh, as a gesture of peace, the government is going to provide food to the Native American groups and there the government is going to sign three treaties. They're going to sign one each with the Kiowa and Comanche, the Plains Apache, and then the Arapaho and Cheyenne. And under these treaties, each group agrees to stop preventing construction of the Transcontinental Railroad, and the groups agree to give up claim to their lands. And they agree to move to reservations in the Indian Territory. As the other side of it is these groups agreed that or the U.S. government agreed that they would let these groups run their own selves on the Indian reservation, that the government would not interfere, would not send troops onto the reservation. The government also agreed to give supplies uh, to the groups on the reservation, so the government would not send troops there, and they would provide supplies to the Native American groups under the Medicine Lodge Creek Treaty. Uh, the treaty, though, is going to fail. It's going to fail because both sides are not going to honor it. Um, President Ulysses S. Grant is going to propose what's called his peace policy. Uh, there's a lot of problems on the reservations. The government agents in charge were mostly corrupt. They stole goods or they sold uh, supplies. They stole money that was sent for the Native American groups to provide for Goods that they needed, food, supplies meant for the Native Americans were stolen by the agents and resold. Uh, President Grant said if Native Americans were treated fairly, then future conflicts would be avoided. So he creates what he calls his peace plan. Under his peace plan, he called for removal of corrupt federal agents. He put the U.S. Army in charge of reservations. Uh, Congress is going to block this because if the Army was in charge, that meant the President had control. Otherwise, Congress has control if the army is not in charge. And Grant then is going to put different religious groups, private groups, missionaries, uh, most of them Quakers in charge because they will tend to see it as a mission and act more fairly towards the Native Americans. Uh, Native Americans are also going to oppose the peace policy. Uh, the reason for this is not all Native American leaders signed the Medicine Lodge Creek Treaty. Uh, the Plains Indian culture was based on moving with the buffalo herds, and each group was its own autonomous entity. They didn't have a larger, say, Comanche nation. Each Comanche band was its own political group, and so those that didn't sign the treaty didn't feel that it applied to them. One of these was Quanah Parker. Uh, 
He was a, a Comanche chief. He was the son of Cynthia Ann Parker. Uh, she became famous in Texas as a small child. She was an Anglo-Texan who was captured uh, when her uh, by a Comanche raiding party. Her family was killed, but she was raised as a Comanche, married Peter Nakona, the Comanche chief, and Quana Parker was her son who would grow up to be sort of the one of the last great Comanche chiefs of the Plains period. And Quana Parker continued to fight against settlement in West Texas. There was some support for peace, though. Some Native American leaders pushed for peace. They felt their way of life could not continue and that they must adapt to survive. The big thing, though, that hurts the peace policy is both sides are going to break the treaty. The Comanche, the Kiowa, and the Apache are going to continue to fight against American settlers. Uh, meanwhile, the U.S. government will also break the peace. They have a, a record, a track record of not honoring treaties that they signed with Native American groups. Um, the U.S. government would not provide enough supplies uh, for the groups living on the reservations. For those supplies that do come, generally they're old, they're rotten, uh, and they spread disease. Um, they will give uh, blankets and things with disease in them to help spread the disease to reduce the Native American population. The hopes for peace are going to come to an end after the Medicine Lodge Creek Treaty um, because some Native American groups are going to continue uh, their way of life. Uh, some refuse to give it up. Reports are going to reach Fort Sill in the Indian Territory, again in present-day Oklahoma, that there are raids continuing in West Texas. So in 1871, General William Tecumseh Sherman, who's the head of the U.S. Army at this point, or the top-ranking general, had been one of Grant's generals during the Civil War. He's going to come west from Washington, D.C. to investigate the situation for himself. So on May 18th, 1871, Sherman is going to arrive at Fort Richardson in Jacksboro in West Texas. Uh, when he's there, like the day after he gets there, a event known as the Warren Wagon Train Raid is going to take place. A hundred Native Americans will attack a wagon train owned by Henry Warren near Salt Creek. Uh, in the raid, seven people are going to be killed. Five will escape. Uh, the Native Americans will return to the reservations after the attack uh, with all of the supplies and the mules and stuff they took in the raid. Uh, but this is going to freak out General Sherman because the attack took place on the exact same trail he had traveled just a few days before. So this group of Native Americans that attacked the wagon train could have attacked him, but they didn't. But he's like, oh my gosh, that could have been me. While they investigate it, uh, the Kiowa chief Satanta admits that he helped lead it. Sherman will then order Satanta and two other chiefs arrested and tried for murder. So the aftermath of the raid, the three Native American leaders are arrested at Fort Sill and they're sent to Texas for trial. They're going to again be tried for murder. On the way, one of them, a man by the name of Satank, uh, tries to escape and he is killed. The other two, Satanta and Big Tree, are going to get to Texas, they're going to be tried, and they're going to be found guilty of murder, and they're going to be sentenced to be hanged. Uh, in the trial, Satanta will explain about the problems faced by Native Americans on the reservations and the corruption of the U.S. government. Texas Governor Edmund Davis is going to become worried because Satanta's comments are going to be published, and it creates some sympathy for the Native Americans. He's worried that they're, the execution of uh, Satanta and Big Tree would lead to war between the Native American groups and Texans. So he is going to change the sentence of the two men from execution to life in prison. The Kiowa will stop their raids, and two years later, the uh, Satanta and Big Tree will be released from prison by Governor Davis. But in 1874, Satanta will lead more raids. He's going to be arrested again, and this time he will kill himself while he is in prison. Uh, meanwhile, Sher General Sherman decides that the peace policy has not worked and orders the army to pursue any Native Americans not living on reservations and destroy their camps. A big part of this cam early campaigns against Native Americans was a campaign against the buffalo. The buffalo were a central part of Plains Indian life. 
Uh, their whole life was built around it. In the 1870s, um, Anglo-American buffalo hunters are going to slaughter the buffalo by the millions. Uh, they're going to kill them for their bones, for money, uh, for their hides. Uh, one person who's going to pursue Native American bands is a, in 1871, Colonel Randall S. McKenzie is put in charge of driving Native Americans from the plains. In the summer of 1871, he's going to lead troops into the Texas Panhandle. In October, they're going to pursue a band of Comanche led by Quanah Parker. Uh, they'll lose their trail of Quanah and the Comanche in a snowstorm, and McKenzie and his men will have to return to their fort. In 1872, he's again going to attack the Comanche near Pampa, where he will defeat them. In 1873, he will defeat a group of Kickapoo and Apache along the Rio Grande, which is going to uh, put a halt to some of these oppositions in West Texas. Meanwhile, buffalo hunters are going to destroy the buffalo herds. The government will actively support the slaughter of the buffalo. Buffalo. The hunters will be doing this because they want the hides and bones, and they'll leave the rest to rot. Uh, millions of buffalo will be killed in just a few years. And the government supports this because since the buffalo were the main source of food for the Plains Indians, by wiping out the buffalo herds, it's going to lead to starvation and try to, the government's plan is that if they starved the Native Americans, it would force the Native American groups on the plains that had not moved to reservations, it would force them to move to reservations if they wanted to survive. The fighting will eventually come to an end in West Texas by the late 1800s. Native American groups are going to grow more frustrated and increase their attacks on settlements as the buffalo are slaughtered and starvation increases for the Plains Indians that have not moved to the reservations. Uh, the army, though, is also going to grow stronger. One big fight takes place on June 1874 at a place called Adobe Walls. Quanta Parker and 700 Comanche are going to attack 28 buffalo hunters in the Texas Panhandle who were holed up in an adobe house, hence the name Adobe Walls. The fighting will last for several days. In the fighting, 15 Native Americans will be killed and four buffalo hunters will be killed. But the Comanche are forced to retreat with numerous wounded. And so this is seen as a, a big fight for the uh, whites who are moving onto the land as they've pushed back an attack from the Native Americans. The army is also going to step up theirs uh, with what's known as the Red River Campaign. President Grant will put the army in charge of Native Americans in West Texas. Um, Native Americans had to register with the United States Army and moved to reservations, and if they didn't, then the Army was going to force them to do that. 4,000 Native Americans will refuse, and they will move into the Texas Panhandle, and so the U.S. Army will follow them as part of this Red River campaign to capture and force these Native American groups onto reservations. Uh, at the Battle of Paladero Canyon on September 1874, Colonel McKenzie will lead his cavalry into the canyon they will burn several Native American villages, and they will kill over 1,000 horses. So with the loss of their villages, their supplies, and their horses, the Native American groups are going to be forced now to move onto the reservations. And as a result, by 1875, the last group of Comanche will move to the Indian Territory, uh, ending this era of conflict in West Texas. One group who's important, as we already mentioned, uh, for this period are the group known as the Buffalo Soldiers. During the Civil War, 180,000 African Americans will fight for the Union Army for the North. This is the first time African Americans are officially allowed into the United States Army. The Army was segregated. Um, the African Americans, though, again, the Army was segregated. They were put in segregated units. Uh, after the war, Congress will create two permanent cavalry units, the 9th and 10th Cavalry, and two infantry units, the 24th and 25th Infantry, that were strictly African-American units, that the enlisted soldiers in them were all African-Americans. Again, the Army was segregated. Uh, and it was these troops that were sent to the frontier to serve on the frontier in West Texas. Uh, they were stationed in for a former slaveholding state of Texas, which would create a little tension. Uh, the soldiers faced racism from both the Army and the Texans, you know, sometimes violent. Uh, the African-American troops had white officers who were generally not the most competent officers. Uh, 
uh, the, the best officers were not assigned to the African-American units. And the African-American units were given poor supplies. The Buffalo soldiers made lower pay than whites. They made roughly half the salary of a white soldier of the same rank strictly because they were African-American. It was just racism. And they were also given the worst jobs. In West Texas, one of their jobs was, of course, to... Uh, fight against the Native Americans, but also to pursue outlaws. Uh, one Native American person they were after is Victorio. He was an Apache chief in Arizona. In 1877, he started raiding settlements along the Rio Grande, both in Texas and Mexico. In 1880, Colonel Benjamin Grierson will lead a group of Buffalo soldiers on a 1,500-mile march across West Texas in search of Victorio. They will catch up with him near the Guadalupe Mountains. They will fight for three hours uh, and the Native Americans will retreat into Mexico, uh, where he will, uh, because of the fighting, leave Texas kind of alone. And then in October of 1880, Mexican soldiers will trap Victorio, and he will uh, be killed by the Mexican soldiers along with all of his men. Uh, another issue was outlaws along the Rio Grande. In the 1870s, we see an increase in outlaw activity in Texas because of the lack of uh, military and other efforts there following the war. This lack of law enforcement along the border caused this increase in outlaw activity. Uh, a lot of these outlaws were Civil War deserters and renegades. Uh, they kept robbing, committing other crimes, murder. In 1874, the state government of Texas will send the Texas Rangers into the region. The Texas Rangers did not always act above the law. Um, a lot of people accuse them of committing just as much atrocities, uh, specifically Tejanos, saying the violence against Tejanos in Texas as the outlaws. But the Texas Rangers will work to uh, bring these outlaws under control. One specific one is a guy by the name of Juan Cortina. He will lead a band of Mexican soldiers who will fight for the rights of Mexicans and Tejanos along the border. And so the Texas Rangers will go after him. To many, uh, specifically, again, Tejanos and Mexicans along the border, Juan Cortina is a hero. He's fighting to protect their rights that are being uh, infringed upon by the Texas government, by white settlers in the region. To the Texas Rangers, Juan Cortina is an uh, outlaw, and in 1875, the U.S. government is going to force the Mexican government to arrest Cortina uh, to stop his uh, attacks on Texas. By 1890, though, West Texas is going to change. The population in West Texas had tripled. The Native Americans had been driven out. And now the railroad crossed the region. Uh, and with the railroad came new cities, such as Abilene, which was built in 1881. And as a result, this frontier era in 1890 has disappeared. We have lost that wild, unsettled western part of Texas that had been part of our identity for so long. And now we've moved towards a more settled community in life.